to practice what we preach, to practice what we believe, to practice it by digging a well so that folks who have no water suddenly have clean water, to practice what we preach when we step into the LGBT Elder Housing Association on Thursday and we feed folks who perhaps their relatives have abandoned them for this time of the year, to feed one another and to love one another. That's how we become mature in our faith, is by practicing it. Yesterday I had the great honor, and I really mean this, of being at the taping of the CNN Heroes um, last year our board was able to go and uh, this year my partner had tickets from the Lesbian and Gay Center and so we got to go again this year. And uh, it'll be on Thanksgiving night so if you want to watch some inspirational television uh, on Thanksgiving I really encourage you to, to watch the CNN Heroes again this year. But I, I, I sat there and I want to say tears were running down my, my cheeks, but my partner tells me that when I cry, I don't shed tears. Um, it's just an emotional cry. Um, and he's been surprised. Actually, I'm, I'm very surprised. I don't know what that's about. I'm dealing with that in therapy. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the reality is that when I cry, it, I just don't seem to shed tears, but everything inside my body is crying. I don't, perhaps you've had that experience. I don't know, but it's, it's an experience I have. I don't know if that's something to do. I'm not in therapy right now. So, <laughs> let me step out of that mode. But, um, but I'm dealing with it. And perhaps, but, you know, but, but, you know, <laughs> I promise you, I'm dealing with it. Uh, but, but, but everything inside me was crying. As story after story after story of remarkable things that ordinary people did. And they didn't do it in order that they might be a hero. <laughs> You know, they didn't set out one day and think, oh, you know, I want to get on CNN Heroes, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get someone to nominate me, and I'm going to get, you know, they didn't start out that way. What they did was that they saw a need, and they met it. One young man from Cuba lives in New York, and um, he drives a school bus, and he gets up at five in the morning, and he drives a school bus, and he finishes at five in the evening. And one day he was traveling in his school bus and he saw this group of men who were just stood over on the street corner. And he saw this group of men day in and day out and he couldn't figure out what on earth they were doing. And so one day, instead of just driving his bus past, he wound his window down and he said to this group of men, he said, what are you doing? And he said, well, we're a day labor. And we wait here every day in the hopes that someone will give us a job for the day in order that at the end of the day there's enough money to go and buy food for the table. And the man from Cuba, he said to them, he said, be here tomorrow at 5.30 and I'll make sure you have food. And he went home and he called his wife and family together and that very next day they cooked food for this 12, 15 men who stood on the corner that day. And he took food to them at 5.30 and they were extremely grateful. And the next day, 20. <laughs> and the next day, 40. And the next day, 60. And the next day, 100. And now 150 men every day get fed because this man wound his window down and said to them, what do you need? 365 days of the year, seven days a week. They showed a picture of his house, a small house. He has eight refrigerators in his house right now. I'm told that's pretty Cuban. <laughs> eight refrigerators. He's turned his garage, garage into, um, uh, into a storehouse. And every day, he and his family, when he gets home at 5.30... He takes off his uniform and he puts on his clothes to cook. And last night when he received his award, he, you know, obviously there was some question about, well, what's happening tonight? You're here receiving your award. He said, my sister stayed home to cook for those 150 men tonight. That's spiritual maturity. 
That's growing up in our faith. That's about allowing our lives to speak so that they make a difference. So I encourage you, as you go out into the world today, in the busyness of Los Angeles, in the busyness of our lives, we're dashing from one place to the next. What will be the opportunity that we get to wind down our window and say, what do you need? What can I do for you? Because realistically, friends, Christianity is about being of service. Nothing more and nothing less. So let us do, move from the milk. Let's take on the solids in this church and in every aspect of our lives to the very best of our ability. God bless you. Let's pray. Holy God, we acknowledge that so often we, we just walk by. And so often we, we don't know what to do. Sometimes we, we just feel helpless. But I want to thank you, God, that this morning you're challenging us just a little bit to move from the milk of the gospel to grow up to be mature Christians. And to grow up in such a way that realistically what that means is that we make our lives count for something that they speak into the world. I want to thank you, God, that we don't believe in you when just the good things are happening, but rather we believe in you even when it feels like that you aren't with us. But we are assured this morning that you journey with us through all circumstances. So I want to pray, God, for this congregation in all of our circumstances, the good and the not so good, that we might allow you to speak through us and reach out to one another, not only in this church, but in the world in which we find ourselves. And that who knows, but that if we speak our lives out into this world, we might awaken the God that is in someone else that has laid dormant because of what the church has taught or what the church has thought or what has been pronounced by somebody or some other experience. And that by allowing that to be woken up in somebody else, somebody else then gets to bring something new to this world. God, I pray that you would bless these words that have come from my mouth. That they would be used this morning to inspire us, to challenge us, to wake us up, to move us in our own journeys. So that ultimately we might be teachers that allow someone else to find their hope in you. God's blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.